Today we've got Ryan Riddle's truck on the dyno. This is a truck that has been uh, 770 racing for, I don't know, four years now. Ryan's won a lot of races, done very well with the truck, and so far he's all had the stock 5.9 short block in the truck, and last fall he had a piston ring that finally gave up and uh, gave him a bunch of blow-by. So he put a D&J 6.7 liter performance series in it that has billet rods and 14 millimeter head studs, like a stage one head. So he's got pretty much all the supporting mods to make up to, you know, 11, 1200 horsepower. He's got 300% overs from Exergy that we just put in it. And this is a 6.7 piston bull with the like a 0304 style early 5.9 spray pattern seven hole injector. And the main reason I'm wanting to do some comparisons today because I have the identical injectors in the quad cab except they are five hole and wide bowl. So they're both 300% over, same fuel quantities down low, same fuel quantities up high, but we have the QSB 6.7 liter wide bowl pistons in the quad cab with the five hole 126 degree spray pattern injector and this has the 6.7 smaller bowl uh, piston with the seven hole 143 degree uh, spray pattern. So I'm wanting to see a comparison as far as how clean we can get it at idle versus haze, you know, at low boost, and then also compare it to the power that we make. Sometimes on the smaller bowl stuff, piston bowl, we've seen um, a power loss comparing to the wide bowl, and we've always kind of preferred the wide bowl just because of the horsepower testing we've done. Uh, but he was able to make 902 horsepower with the 5.9 setup and this uh, Taterbilt, I believe it's a 67, 67, maybe a 68, 68 turbo. Um, so I want to just do a comparison. Obviously, we're going to be air limited. We got plenty of fuel, um, but that's what the comparison is today is trying to get comparing the two injectors to see how they behave. Uh, I have a pretty good feeling of how the quad cab reacts to it. So I want to play with Ryan's truck today with the same injector, 6.7 liter, and go for it. Started with 1200 microseconds and it made 794, which is even more than what he needs for 770. Generally this truck needs around 740 horsepower to run the 770 index. Um, and then we turned it up until we ran out of CP3 at 1500 microseconds and that did 936 horsepower. So here you can see the overlay between the max effort that we were able to do on the 5.9 uh, versus the new 6.7 liter engine. Uh, we did 902 on max effort on the 5.9 and did 936 with the 6.7. And you can see the power curve really was similar, it just held out the power a little bit longer up top. Um, it's obviously moving more air because it's a bigger air pump. Um, and he really is out of turbo. I mean, this is, I did confirm with Ryan, it is a 6871 from Taterbilt. Um, and it's, you know, doing 936 horsepower on a stock appearing turbo. And it's impressive to make these kind of numbers on these little turbos. They drive real nice, uh, but you got to push them pretty hard. That was 54 pounds of boost at 936 horsepower and then at 900 and uh, or 794 horsepower at 1200 microseconds it made like 48 pounds of boost. Now we're dialing in for 770. I kind of took a stab at it based on the first numbers, and we were 900. Uh, yeah. We were 731 horsepower on tune one, which was 1,050 microseconds. 767 uh, at 1,100 microseconds, and then 798 at uh, 1,150 microseconds. So I'm going to just keep dialing it back. Really, he likes to have the first three tunes between 725 and 750. And that way we can really dial in the 770 when he's out on the event and it's hot 
His 60 foots aren't as good. Based on track conditions, he can kind of tick the power up, tick the power down. So we'll have four tunes that are specific for 770. Then tune five will be a max effort tune. If he really wants to lay it down, you can click it up and have over 900 horsepower on tap. Okay, we've got it almost dialed in, but it started giving me some problems. And if you can look in this data log here, you see rail pressure went really, really erratic. Um, it doesn't look like it's blowing the relief valve open because normally you have rail pressure come up, then it drops off and holds around 13 to 15,000 if the relief valve blows open. But here it dropped almost down to 2,000 pounds of rail pressure. So it either seems like a feed tube is leaking or we actually have a rail pressure sensor wiring problem but we're going to diagnose this a little bit, see if we can figure out what's going on. Hmm. What the hell, Riddle? Paint's already flaking. It's not powder. Okay, well we verified uh, lift pump pressure is good. So next is probably pop a rail pressure relief valve in it. And if that doesn't fix it, then we're going to pull the intake and retorque the feed tubes. Stock one versus the 2200 bar. Moved more than I'd hoped. Might be a good good thing. retorque the feed tubes, we changed rail pressure relief valve, and the problem is still there. So we're going to keep digging in this, see if it's electrical, maybe a sensor, uh, but we will get to the bottom of it. Okay, we wanted to wrap up Brian's video. We never finished it on the dyno because what we were having some uh, rail pressure was acting all kinds of goofy and kind of we couldn't finish the dyno session. And it took you what a week to figure it out. Yep. yep. But uh, what ended up being the problem? So it came down to uh, alternator charge wire. Just yeah, it was loose on the back of the alternator. Yep, yep. Yeah, so it was making voltage do all kinds of stuff, which was messing up the ECM, and it wasn't controlling rail pressure anymore, and it just took a little bit to figure it out because it was weird. It would drive all right, but then under power, when uh, you go full rail pressure, it would mess up. But we're, he's out here at uh, Waggler's, and uh, you went testing last night, didn't you? Yep, yep. It was yep. too fast. Yep, with the, with the kill care in a 730, so we're going to have to back her down a little bit. Yep. So. Knock the tune back in the teeth a little bit and go make some testing today and be ready for tomorrow. Yep. So hopefully this thing will be a uh, force to reckon with again this year. I know you've done really good with the 5.9 and now the 6.7. What's your overall impression of driving the 6.7 now you've driven it? I love it. I, I think 6.7 should be in everything. <laughs> it's power there when you want it. The, the torque is when you want it. It's, it's just great. Yes, it's a very noticeable driving difference going from a 5.9 to a 6.7. Okay, well, good luck to Ryan, and hopefully you can do good this week. Awesome. Thank you.
Damn it, Connor. <laughs> 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 <laughs>